Good to have each one out tonight, and um, I guess I can say, uh, since I left my Bible down here today, I didn't have a chance to study, so we're just dismissing go home. Is that, is that okay? <laughs> no, praise the Lord. Uh, there's so much to preach still, uh, uh, with or without the Bible. Uh, I, I think we can find something. Uh, I would say, though, after 20 after 28 years, what do you preach to the same people that you haven't already preached? Uh, I find a lot of comfort uh, from First Peter there where he said there in chapter 1, uh, though you heard this and know it, uh, yet I find it necessary to put you in remembrance of it for as long as I'm here. But uh, uh, here's a text I haven't preached from in a long time and uh, uh, try to keep it somewhat short tonight. Um, but turn to Genesis chapter 4. I don't know of any area where it's Satan has done such a tremendous job of deceiving people into thinking that just any sacrifice is acceptable. And uh, I mean, Genesis chapter 4, verse. Uh, got it? Genesis chapter 4. Verses 1 through 5. But uh, my, what a job Satan has done on deceiving people into thinking that just any sacrifice, as long as I believe in Jesus, that's all it takes and I'm going to heaven, you know. Uh, and so deceived into thinking that just any sacrifice is acceptable. And I don't think it's an accident that uh, God had Moses record, uh, you know, just as soon as he got the creation out of the way in the sense of the word in chapters 1, 2, and 3, there he gives us a story of two brothers. One offered an acceptable sacrifice and the other an unacceptable sacrifice. And um, uh, we look at this just for a moment and uh, then just kind of uh, look at a couple of three other texts in the Bible that uh, uh, relates to the fact that uh, what God accepts uh, and uh, uh, may not accept. But here in Genesis chapter 4 it said, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Uh, and she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a killer of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Let me stop there just for a moment. And point out here that, uh, you know, I'd like to think we have no real definite, it's interesting that Adam is not found anywhere in Hebrews chapter 11, um, as, uh, you know, that Abel is the first one who is to be mentioned by name. Uh, uh, before him comes the elders obtained a good report, but Abel is the first one uh, to be mentioned. And, uh, but uh, it's quite obvious that uh, Adam continued to serve the Lord uh, and that he taught his boys to serve the Lord. It, it's interesting that uh, uh, the first individual in the Bible who the Bible speaks of is offering up a sacrifice was uh, a ungodly person. Uh, it was uh, Cain, uh, uh, not Abel. Notice he says there in verse 2, uh, verse 3, and in process of time, don't know how much time, but in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruits of the ground and offered unto the Lord, uh, all capital letters, Jehovah there. Uh, uh, and, um, and, and verse 4 says, And Abel, he also brought of the uh, firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. You might underline there, if you like, uh, uh, that word fat there. It's interesting. Uh, when we get to the law, not until, you know, Moses in the law, some, uh, uh, heaven, let me see, 8, 16, some 2,400 years later, when Moses writes the law, uh, gives us the law, there, the requirement that God had in receiving an offering or, or that portion of the offering uh, God took was the fat uh, of the um, uh, you know, the, the entrails and the fat there uh, was what was offered up. Uh, uh, 
God always gives us the best, amen, uh, uh, and uh, unless you happen to be somebody who likes the fat, but uh, anyway, uh, uh, somehow or another, Abel knew what to, uh, not only to offer up a blood sacrifice, but he knew what portion of that sacrifice to offer up. Uh, um, the, he was the first one of his flock, and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel, that is, the Lord respected uh, or the Lord accepted Abel's uh, sacrifice. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. In other words, he did not accept Cain's offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance failed. But uh, how important is that we uh, find right off uh, there are sacrifices that God accepts. There are sacrifices that God does not accept. And uh, uh, again, how sad it is that uh, uh, so many people are deceived today into believing that uh, they can just offer God up anything. Uh, uh, you know, they don't have time to give him their time. Uh, they're too tight to give him their more, their money. Uh, uh, so, Lord, uh, just know I believe in you. And uh, now let me get on with my sin. And uh, and somehow I know that's going to be accepted of God. It's not going to be accepted of God according to what God's Word teaches. I, I was just kind of looking at the different uh, uh, references uh, in the Bible, and I'm sure there's a lot between uh, um, Genesis chapter 4, verse uh, 1 through uh, 5 there, uh, and 2 Samuel chapter 24. But if we turn over to 2 Samuel chapter 24, we, we have this word for uh, accept again. Uh, David had committed a great sin uh, in number of the people, uh, and consequently uh, God gave him three uh, uh, choices, and uh, whether they had had the enemy come up on him, whether the plague come on him, or whether uh, God did with him, and, and, and David just said, God, I'm in your hands. You, you just do whatever you want to do. But uh, uh, then when David saw the death angel come over Jerusalem there, uh, David uh, went before God. And he said, God, these, these uh, sheep, they're innocent. Uh, you know, if me and my house that have sinned and uh God sends Gad the prophet to David and tell him to go up to Aaron's house there and offer up a sacrifice. So he, he comes, uh, if you want to read it there, you can begin about verse 17. Uh, and David uh, spake unto the Lord when he saw uh, the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, uh, what have they done? Lest thine hand... Uh, um, let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. And, uh, and listen, tonight uh, we, we have the key uh, to uh, our problems. When we sin, uh, what we do is we don't do what Cain did, get angry and just uh, uh, sin more. But uh, we recognize our sin. We bring it before God. We uh, confess our sins, repent of it. And you know that. And I, I'm preaching to the choir tonight. But maybe somebody over the YouTube will uh, pull this up and listen to it. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, in verse 18, it said, Yeah, it came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Aronah, the Jebusite. And David, according to the sayings of Gad, he went up at the Lord's commanded. And Aaron I looked, and he saw the king and his servants coming on towards him. And Aaron I went out and bowed himself before King David on his face upon the ground. And Aaron I said, Wherefore is my Lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor of thee to build an altar unto the Lord that the plague may be stayed from the people and ever I said unto David let my Lord the king take and offer up what seemeth good unto him behold here be oxen for burnt sacrifices and a threshing instrument and other instruments of the oxen for wood all these things did Aaron as a king give unto the king unto David, King David. And Aaron said unto the king, The Lord thy God accept thee. David could have just accepted it, but uh, 
what a right heart David has. Uh, no wonder we read that David is a man after God's own heart. In verses 24 there it said, And the king, that's David, said unto Aaron, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which does cost me nothing. So David brought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated. That is, he accepted David's offering for the land and the plague was stayed from Israel. Uh, uh, what a heart David has. Uh, I'm not going to offer up a sacrifice to God that costs me nothing. How many, how many Christian people, how many uh, 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 Christian people today just sat home or went fishing or did whatever, uh, you know, uh, mowed the grass or played in the yard or, or whatever, uh, uh, unwilling to give God, even on his day, uh, uh, a sacrifice that cost them the time, uh, the energy, the effort to get ready to go out to his house, to be a blessing to his people, uh, to worship God in spirit and in truth and give God praise. Uh, that's just too much a sacrifice for many people to accept today. Uh, praise God, each one of you accepted that a responsibility, and all of you were here this morning. Well, Ray and Candace uh, really was sick and unable to come, but they're here tonight, and uh, uh, we're glad for that. But uh, my, uh, what a right attitude, what a proper heart for us to have when uh, we uh, uh, want to offer up a sacrifice to God. Number one, we realize that just not any old sacrifice will do uh, that uh, uh, and we don't want to be like Cain uh, who just offered up whatever Cain wanted to offer up uh, uh, some have said the reason God accepted uh, Abel's sacrifice was that uh, um, Abel's sacrifice involved a blood sacrifice and Cain's didn't uh, and uh, there's probably certainly some merit to that but uh, uh, more than that uh, God was able to look in Abel's heart and see that Abel's heart was right if you, uh, we'll look at uh, Hebrews uh, uh, in a moment and notice there that Abel had a righteous heart. Uh, he was uh, righteous. Uh, whereas Cain had an unrighteous heart. God, I'll offer you up a sacrifice, but I'll give you what I want to give you. Uh, you can take it or leave it. And if you don't take it, then I'm going to get aggravated. And, and I'm not going to talk to you. Uh, I'm just going to pout. And uh, uh, so uh, you, uh, you take this or leave it. And uh, uh, that's all you're going to get from me. Uh, kind of the attitude that Cain had, and I'm afraid it's the attitude of so many professing Christians today. Uh, at, uh, uh, here in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, all of you know it. Uh, uh, Paul said there, after laying out uh, in the first 11 chapters uh, our standing before God, how we can how we can be made righteous through faith, uh, uh, through repentance, and so forth. Uh, after laying out the doctrine, uh, uh, he comes to the practicality part in verse twelve. He says, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you present that is that you offer up to God your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable." which is just a reasonable service. Uh, Paul understood there is a sacrifice that is acceptable and there's a sacrifice that isn't. If you turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 8 there, uh, Paul said, We are confident, yea, rather uh, willing to be separate from the body, that we might be present with the Lord. Uh, uh, he, he was... Uh, uh, ready to go home to be with the Lord there. Matter of fact, that was his, uh, uh, that was his rathers. Uh, but in verse 9, he says this, uh, therefore, uh, knowing that whether present or whether absent, whether still in this body walking around alive or going home to be with Jesus, uh, whether uh, alive or except, uh, whether, uh, 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 you know, present or absent, uh, 
I labor that I might be accepted. I, I pray, listen, if we're going to offer up an acceptable sacrifice. Uh, it's going to cost us something. It's going to cost us time. It's going to cost us effort. It's going to cost us resources. Uh, it's going to cost us a right attitude towards God. It, it's going to cause us uh, to uh, delight in God and uh, consequently to present ourselves unto him uh, holy, uh, a, a sacrifice that he uh, can accept. And um, uh, while we are in this body, um, and uh, somebody said, I, I don't know why Paul said whether uh, present or whether absent, if we're present with it, we don't have to offer up a sacrifice. Uh, but uh, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, about verses 15 through 17, when we are present with him, uh, we're going to stand before him in judgment. And all of our works down here, all of the sacrifices that we've offered up down here, acceptable or unacceptable, are going to pass through the fire. And uh, uh, God will either accept them and reward them, uh, or God will simply take away any reward that we might have uh, uh, because of the fact that uh, nothing we did down here was such as, as was acceptable to God. Uh, and consequently, uh, um, we make heaven by grace through faith, but we get a reward because we have offered up acceptable sacrifices unto God. And finally, if we turn over to Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 4 here in, in, in chapter 11, we notice the results. If you go back to Genesis chapter 4, you don't have to read far to find out the results of Cain's, the sacrifice that Cain offered. Uh, he offered up a sacrifice that was unacceptable. He got angry with God because God wouldn't accept it. Uh, God approached him uh, tenderly and asked, why are you wroth? Uh, why are you angry, Cain? If you do right, you'll be accepted. Uh, uh, but if not, sin lies at the door and consequently, all we've got to do is study uh, uh, Cain's life and find that uh, uh, sin uh, not only lied at the door, but it became a part of his actions. Uh, in just the next couple of verses, Cain will kill his brother Abel and uh, then will flee uh, and um, from the presence of God. But if we go to Hebrews chapter 11 in, in verse 4 here, uh, after explaining to us what faith is, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, by it, the elders obtained a good report through faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which were seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Uh, I mean, that's what. That's what. That's the sacrifice that we want to offer. Uh, we want to offer up a sacrifice that will give testimony to the fact that we are righteous. That uh, we have been robed in the righteousness of Christ by faith, uh, and therefore uh, uh, our sacrifices are acceptable. Um, uh, he goes on to say here, uh, uh, by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. One commentary says, uh, are is yet spoken of. I went back through my mind and I tried to figure up the years. Uh, it's 1600, I believe it is, and 63 years between Adam and the flood. It's about 500 years between the flood and Abraham. Abraham lived uh, around 1800. Uh, we put all of that together and uh, we come out with somewhere uh, between 3,500 and 4,000 years uh, and uh, able is still being spoken of today as a one who offered up a acceptable sacrifice. And so uh, uh, when um, we uh, go throughout our day-by-day -day activities, let us look for opportunities to offer up 
a acceptable sacrifice. I actually, I was going to preach this morning on the reward, or tonight, on the rewards of heaven. Uh, we worked on it this afternoon and got the notes over there. Uh, but as I sat in here, uh, I just, uh, God just seemed to uh, give this to me. And so this is a spur of the moment message. Uh, but uh, uh, how important it is that uh, we live our lives day by day. Uh, serving God, presenting our bodies, our resources, our opportunities uh, under God, a living sacrifice that is holy, consecrated, committed, dedicated unto the Lord, uh, that it might be acceptable of God. Paul understood there in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, he says there in, in verse 6, uh, uh, we are confident that as long as we're absent uh, from the Lord, we are. As long as we are present in this body, we're absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Uh, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body, that we might be present with the Lord. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, whether present or absent, we labor that we might be accepted of him. Verse 10 and 11 says, uh, for we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of the things that uh, each one of us have done in this body, that which we have done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Uh, so uh, let us labor uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, our labors, our sacrifices uh, might be such as, as will be pleasing unto the Lord and that will uh, give testimony to the fact that we are indeed righteous. Father, we love you tonight and we just thank you. And Father, I just pray that God, you're just going to, uh, Lord, accept this message, Father, the sacrifice, Lord, unto you. And God, accept the fact these uh, who have come out tonight, Lord, that God, it is a sacrifice, a testimony to the fact that God, uh, Lord, they believe in you. They love you. They love your house. They love your people. They love your word. And they love the opportunity to worship in spirit and in truth. We pray that, God, you would just bless each one, that, God, we might go forth serving you acceptably, not with a sacrifice that's given to us, but one that costs us something, uh, that, God, we might, Lord, that, that, that it, it might be just that, a sacrifice that glorifies you. We thank you, Father, for all that you are and all that you do in the perfect, wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stand.